All right, welcome back. Uh, we're going to be looking at the physical and chemical properties of one of my favorite things that I have in the lab, which is elemental sodium. So here's the container that the elemental sodium comes in, and you'll notice I'm wearing gloves here. That's to keep my hands in contact with the sodium. One of the chemical properties of sodium is that it really is a strong reactor to many things, but especially water. So if my hands have moisture, that's going to cause a burn when the sodium reacts to it. There's other precautions that are taken in this container of sodium to try to keep it from getting exposed to water. So it's inside this metal can, and then you can see it's also got all of these little drying pellets. These are kind of like cat litter, except they don't smell. And their goal is just to soak up moisture, because if moisture gets to sodium, you have an explosion. Here's the container that has the sodium. And even in the container, you can see it's full of this liquid which is mineral oil. Mineral oil is flooded the entire thing to keep the water away from the sodium. So we're going to pull out a chunk of sodium to look at its physical properties and then combine it with some water to look at one of its chemical properties. We'll use some tweezers or forceps to get the sodium chunk out. Let's just grab the first one that I can. Here it is. So this big chunk of sodium, you can see its color. It's a fairly dull gray right now. Um, and it, even though it's a metal, it's fairly lightweight. It's nothing that uh, is, is really weighing things down. One of the interesting parts with sodium, we know that metals are shiny when they're polished. So even though this is very dull, if you look, I'm going to cut right here. If you look when I make a cut, we're going to get a very shiny section of sodium. I'm going to cut off a little bit larger chunk too. And I'm cutting this just with a regular scalpel. Even though it's metal, it's much softer than most of the other metals we're used to experiencing. So with our sodium chunks, we can see the shiny bits where it's been cut. I certainly don't need this much sodium. So I'm going to take this and put it back into the container for next year. And let's examine these two bits. So we've looked at some of the physical properties of sodium especially the size independent ones, like its color, its shape, and its texture. Uh, but when we want to look at chemical properties, we're going to expose this sodium to some water. And in order to see what happens with the reaction, I'm also going to add a couple drops of phenol saline. Now, if you want to think while I'm doing this, what color is this going to turn when I add the phenol saline? Do you have your guess ready? Okay, let's do it. No color change. Phenol saline only changes color in the presence of a base. And if there's a base, it'll turn bright pink. So with the neutral water, you don't get any color change, at least not until I add the sodium to it. So I'm gonna take the sample of sodium, drop it into the water, and I'll tell you right away, there will be several pieces of evidence that a chemical reaction is taking place. Let's watch. So as the reaction kind of winds down, we can see the gas coming off of here is evidence of a chemical reaction. This smoke is hydrogen gas. Uh, we could capture that and test it, but I'll just kind of give that to you for free. We can also see the color change here in the liquid. That phenol saline shows us that there's an indicator um, of a base being present. So we add the sodium to the water and we make sodium hydroxide which was the strongest of the bases that we looked at with red cabbage juice. There we go. Now it's all done. Now that's a fun reaction by itself, but I think we can make this a little bit more exciting. For one thing, we're going to make more sodium in the second sample by using a larger sample. And we're going to add it to a beaker with red cabbage juice instead of the plain water and phenol saline. So when we get a base, this red cabbage juice should change color. And hopefully you remember it would change to more of a greenish or yellowish color. To get the full spectrum though, we're actually going to add this sodium and water, not just to regular water, but to water with a little bit of acid. This way we're going to go through the entire spectrum of the reaction with our red cabbage juice. So we'll start off with a pretty good red color. And as we form more of the sodium hydroxide, we'll get more and more of the base presence. 
with this larger amount, we're also going to release more energy. We heard sound energy before, but we might get some light energy or possibly even an explosion. Let's see. So it looks like no explosion that time. I'll link you to a couple videos of other people who have put in a much larger chunk to get an explosion. But regardless, we can still see the chemical change here. We're getting a color change with our indicator. We're getting energy released in the form of sound. We're producing a new substance in the form of a gas. And when we're done, we've just rearranged the atoms. We haven't made anything disappear or created something that wasn't there before. We've changed the way the atoms are arranged to produce a lot of sodium hydroxide. All right, that's a look at chemical and physical properties for sodium. I'll see you guys later.